Hello basketball coaches and basketball players. My name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to show you a video that's going to be really great if you are trying to defend the swing action in a press break. Now, I was asked this question a few days ago in the comment section of another video. So if you ever have questions, leave them down there. But anyways, uh, let's get down to the clipboard and let me show you what I mean. So the swing, so let's say player one gets that ball. Player one blue is gonna be guarding him pretty much right away. His whole main idea is to try and force him towards the sideline. Now, when he, the whole idea is to basically trap the player right in that corner or this corner. Now, one way to beat this is this defense is going to start shifting over towards this side of the court. And one way to be able to beat a press break is to swing the ball to player four, back over to player two, which is now going to be forcing player one to run all this distance. And then the defense needs to go and again defend their spots on the court. Now, by swinging the ball, what you're hoping to do is to catch the defense off kilter and be able to beat a hole or with player one now moving over player two can then pass to player four and player four can beat the and beat the defense and beat the hole something like that there's many different ways of beating a press however swinging the ball back around is one way of beating a press defense now on the defensive side what we want to try and do is to ingrain in our players that they cannot cross certain lines so by swinging the ball around, a lot of teams will have players who can then move over, go past that line at half, and then we're going to be able to swing that ball around, get it past half. Now, passing the ball is a lot faster than dribbling the ball, so that's why we want to reverse that ball. Now, the issue with this on defense is we need to ingrain in our players to now stay behind certain lines. So if we're running, for example, the 1-3-1, one, one, I do not want any players to go past half. Player 5, I do not want him to go past the, ha the free throw line extended. And player 1, when they inbound that ball, we do not want player 1 to go past that free throw line extended on that side. That way he's able to force players to go in that direction and then... When they do do a swing pass over to player four, it's just player one who's running. And then player four, two, and three, they're still past half. When they swing that ball around, they're already in their locations to defend that swing past half. And now it's just player one who is running to go and defend player two red. Now if they go and pass to player four now, Normally speaking, we would want these players to close off the middle, which then leaves this whole side open. However, instead of focusing on what's happening up front, let player 4 handle that head on, which then will have player 1 go over and force him again over towards this side of the court. And then we can slowly move them over. Now, if, for example, you get caught off guard, so player one has it, player four has moved over, player two has moved over, and we have gotten caught off guard. What we need to teach our players next is when they start to swing, we want now player four to take handle of player four red. We want player two to watch out for player two or move back to his location. If player two moves back to his location, we need player five blue to step up and player three red to move back. It's all within the guidelines that I like to set out with my players where if a player goes and defends another player's position, we need to fill in the empty spots. So now player one now needs to move back and we're still in our 1-3-1. One, one. Now this is an advanced way of running a press defense however it is very effective so if they were to swing over to player two we are still in our one three one we don't have player two going past half player four now needs to go and catch up now the same thing would happen let's say we get caught off guard we have clumped the middle of the court 
they're able to swing that ball around very easily. If they start swinging, we want player 5 to step up. When they swing, we want player 1 to go over and cut it off. Then we want either player 3 to cover middle and player 2 to cover down, and player 4 will then move back. This way that we're still in our 1-3-1. One, one. I hope this is making sense so far. It's not an easy way of running the defense. However, if you make mistakes or if your team makes mistakes like overloading a side so that the swing is possible and very easy to happen, then you need to bring in options that will allow your team to be able to then recover from that mistake just like that so by keeping your players home behind certain lines so for a 1-3-1 as an example we would have the player up front not able to go past that free throw line extended those three players in the middle not able to go past that, that half court line and then that player in the back not able to go past that free throw line extended and then if they do we can then back it up by having the defense swing around itself so that now there is no position that is open on the court when it comes to defense. Now this is the same as like a 1-2-1-1 one, 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 where player 1, he is going to be covering this whole area. Player 2 and 3 will not be crossing that free throw line extended. Player 4 will not be crossing that half court line and player 5 will not be crossing that half or that free throw line extended. That way, when player one gets open, we're going to have a player right on right away. And a lot of teams will swing that ball back over to player four because of the pressure right away on player one. Well, because of this, player two is going to go pretty wide. So we can get player one to cut back really quickly, and we did not make a mistake. We're not having player two go up. And then there's a quick swing to player two and they've pretty well much beat our zone defense at that point because they can get the ball to player three who is past half very easily. By keeping player two home, he's cutting off that pass and player one can then beat player four before he gets to the free throw line so that now he doesn't have an option to pass anymore. Player two's cut that off. Player three's cut off this pass. And player four, because of the distance, he's cut off both of these passes. Now, if you would like, we can have player five move over to that free throw line extended and player four move over towards this side. If the ball was more on that side of the court, we would have player four on that side and player five on this side. Ball on this side, player four goes that side, player five goes that side. Again, we're not crossing those lines. That way, player one is able to force player four up the court. We can then have player four blue. He can cover player one. Player two is still moving over, covering the middle, but remembering not to pass that free throw line extended. And then we can have that force over to that corner. So remembering to keep your players home behind certain lines will help you become a better basketball team. I hope that this video helps. I hope this video makes sense. If it does, let us know in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys later on today for the second video of the day.